YouTube has a problem. And YouTube is changing. I've seen this change in attitude. I've been really bummed about the state of YouTube over the last little while. If you smell! Jesus Christ, man. The state of YouTube right now. All the drama. Fuck YouTube. It's more like a drama tube nowadays, isn't it? Drama, drama, drama. Everywhere I look, more drama. And here's the main issue with this. Every bastard on this site seems to have stopped focusing on making real content for you guys and has started focusing purely on drama, haven't they? No! No, they haven't! That's absolutely false! Seriously, where are people getting this shit from? Well, let me tell you. PewDiePie, Markiplier and Matthew Santoro have recently made videos doing some Fox News level fear mongering saying that something as generic and vague as drama as a whole is ruining this website. No disrespect to any of them, right? But I'm just being real, okay? They're wrong here, right? Absolutely wrong. They make no distinction between bad drama, like rape allegations, and good drama, such as hashtag where's the fair use and hashtag make YouTube great again. But making no distinction between good drama and bad drama, the videos they made have had a negative impact on some YouTubers, including myself. I know I'm not having that. Not one fucking bit. What the rock is cooking? I'm having to be involved in this YouTube drama with YouTube drama itself. Now listen, I've been making a conscious effort to avoid any videos on YouTube drama for about two months. But this is pissing me off now. Ever since this whole drama is a problem shit started blowing up on YouTube because of these three YouTubers, right? I'm getting people who now see my channel in a negative light saying that I'm somehow a drama whore. Like for example, I'm seeing comments like this crop up here and there. I cannot get over this comment, seriously. I'm a drama whore! Really? I'm one of the few channels that didn't make a video on the H3H3 Leafy drama, right? That shit was huge. Every single channel on YouTube was chiming in and adding their two cents to that topic. Any video on that topic would have been guaranteed millions of views, but I didn't make one on it. And fuck that, the Fine Brothers drama was even bigger than that. Every single cunt on YouTube and their fucking father was making a video adding their two cents to that drama as well, but again, I didn't. I was like the one guy who avoided both of those dramas. I didn't want anything to do with them. And on top of that, I haven't made any drama related videos in two fucking months. And the drama video that I did make two months ago got the CEO of YouTube, Susan Wojcicki, to tweet at us and start listening to us about how to make YouTube better. All of that drama avoiding and the positive drama and I still get people calling me a drama whore. All because of these three idiots. Now listen right, if I get criticism that's not a problem, but I do not deserve that criticism. That's bullshit. And the reason I'm getting that shit is because these three idiots made them fucking moron videos. And it's not just me either. Other channels are also getting affected by this bullshit because of these three guys. It's all because of these three. And just in case any of you aren't familiar with these three who have completely changed how everyone on YouTube sees drama, let me just remind you who this genius trio, the recent Voices of Reason, the fucking Einstein, Newton and Tesla of YouTube are. Uh, uh. What the fuck man? These guys are the ones who caused all this. Is this a joke? Shut up, Grade! They must clearly know a thing or two about this website. Look at how many subscribers they have made! I feel as if this is the only reason why people have been listening to these three. Because they have a lot of subscribers. But let me just remind you, okay? Having a shitload of subscribers, or even being the most subscribed guy on the entire website, doesn't mean dick. Just to prove that point, right? Do you know who else used to be the most subscribed guy on this entire website at one point? Hey, it's Fred! What's up, Homie G? Fred! Fred used to be the most subscribed guy on all of YouTube for quite a while. Would Fred ever have been taken nearly as seriously as these three guys are being taken right now? Exactly! No he wouldn't! Ever! He would never be taken seriously, not in a million fucking years! All they have is that they're big YouTubers. That doesn't mean that they're smart. They have a lot of subscribers, not brain cells. So don't fall into the trap of thinking that these guys are worth listening to either. This shit about drama is being blown way out of proportion by them. And it's affecting YouTube channels that don't deserve it, including myself. Which is why I personally give as much of a shit as I do. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to analyze all three of their videos and I'm going to show you why they're all terrible and why you shouldn't listen to any of them on this issue. Take the guy who kind of started the whole current drama on YouTube is a problem thing, PewDiePie. Now listen, there's not too much to criticize PewDiePie on because his was a short video and he didn't really say too much that you can argue with. Like most of it was pretty solid stuff, right? But there was one fundamental thing he did which makes it impossible to respect him on this issue. In his video, PewDiePie literally said, Drama. I can't think of anything more stupid to waste your time on. But it seems that the internet would disagree with me on that one. Not just the internet, PewDiePie, but it seems as if you yourself would disagree with you on this one. Despite saying that drama is the stupidest thing you could waste your time on, he then went and wasted his time and started a little bit of drama with KSI. And as if that wasn't bad enough, right? He did this literally the next day after uploading the video. PewDiePie couldn't even go one single day without spending his time on what he considers to be the biggest waste of time. <laughs> what? Like, look at this, man. That's some legit roast level fire right there. KSI, here's an ice pack for those burns, man. Now listen, to tell the world that drama is the stupidest thing to waste your time on and then be involved in it literally the next fucking day is ridiculous. Given that level of hypocrisy, you can't expect anyone to listen to you after that or take you seriously at all. But I guess PewDiePie wants it to stop while he himself gets to carry on. Well practice what you preach my dude. If you won't listen to your own fucking advice, why should anyone else? Now let's get into the videos that I really want to criticize, Markiplier and Matthew Santoro. And let's start with Markiplier, cause he made his first. Okay, so Markiplier was the one who essentially started all of this current drama is a problem trend that's going around YouTube right now. By the way, just to get this out of the way, right? I find it very fucking surprising that people would ever take this guy seriously. Does this look like the hair of someone that you should take seriously? No, of course not! But despite his period blood coloured hair, Markiplier is pretty confident that he knows what he's talking about. I know YouTube. The only thing that I have the right to talk about is the YouTube. But I do know YouTube because I live YouTube. Okay, so Markiplier is saying that he's very confident in his knowledge of YouTube and that on this topic, you can trust him. And the reasons he gives for this are... What I see from doing this for four years, being at the heart of YouTube and being where I am now from where I started. I'm obviously sitting high up on, on the YouTube rung and- We've already covered that having a lot of subscribers doesn't mean that you know jack shit about this website, right? But let's just pick it apart a little bit more. I've been doing this for four years. If you've been doing it for four years, Markiplier, this fucking clown's name is Mr. Pregnant and he's been making videos for almost the entire time that YouTube's been around. 10 years. So should we listen to him as well? Exactly! No we shouldn't, okay? So that's a shit point. I have a lot of subscribers. Well fuck me Mark, the Fine Brothers have more subscribers than you as well, but as they showed a few months ago, that does not necessarily mean that they know much about where the site's going either, does it? Another shit point. Again, this video pretty much changed the current tide on YouTube. It caused a website-wide discussion about the issue that is drama. I mean personally, right? Like, in all honesty, I thought his video was a complete, unorganized fucking mess. But that's just what I think, right? Maybe I'm biased, I don't know. So let's just quickly see what some other big YouTubers thought about the video. And then when I'm trying to understand what the actual point of the video is, there pretty much isn't one. His video was hypocritical and rambling. Yes. He I didn't have a cohesive point at all. As I watched that video for this podcast and came out of it with almost nothing. Vague and confusing video where he kind of talks for a bit, but clearly without any kind of script. So it's very muddled and lacks any point or focus. Thanks for wasting 12 minutes of my life, buddy. Right. So it looks like no one liked the video. Everyone thought that video was shit. So given that, can someone tell me again why anyone took this fucking guy seriously? And especially when he himself admits to being someone you shouldn't particularly listen to. Like, who am I to say what one thing is or another? And people look to me for advice, I'm like, well, I don't know what I'm doing, why are you talking to me? Yet here he is, hoping that you'll listen to him. How the fuck did this video cause any change on the website at all? But whatever, it did, right? But nonetheless, let me point out exactly why this video, and I mean this honestly, right? Is easily one of the worst videos I've ever seen. <laughs> it's been four years and I still don't know how to introduce myself on a vlog, but- Good start, Mark! So much for your four years of experience then, right? Anyways, 
One thing that's particularly worth mentioning is something that he has noticed on YouTube, which he calls the self-fulfilling cycle of pessimism. Is what I can only describe, and I took a lot of time thinking about these words, is a self-fulfilling cycle of pessimism. And did you hear that right? He said that he took a long time thinking of these exact words. However, despite taking a long time to think of those exact words, this happened. And what I mean by self-fulfilling, self, self, <laughs> what did I even say? I don't even know. He forgets the perfect phrase which he spent so much time thinking of. And even worse than that, right? Despite spending a long time thinking of those exact words. Self-fulfilling, self, self, <laughs> what did I even say? I don't even know. What I say by the vicious cycle of pessimism is what I'm going to call it now. <laughs> he then rejects the name that he gave it himself. This man is a complete fucking retard. How has anyone taken this idiot seriously? I think we can all see, right? This is not looking like a well thought out video that we should give any respect to. But this isn't even it, right? It gets even worse. The fact that YouTube as a whole can listen to someone like Markiplier purely because of his subscriber count is even scarier given just how weird he is. Just watch this. A self-fulfilling cycle of pessimism. And that's a big phrase for Marky Moo to say, but- What? What? Marky Moo? For Marky Moo to say, but Marky Moo to say, but Marky Moo to say, Marky Moo to say, Marky Moo! We're listening to someone who literally refers to himself as Marky Moo! He's 26! What 26 year old man who wants to be taken seriously calls himself Marky Moo? Fucking Marky Moo! You come across as a fucking child! I honestly see him as a child in a man's body. With the hair of an edgy teenager. That is the only way that I can describe what I see. Really, Marky Moo? That's the only way you would have described it. Because I thought you would have gone with something more along the lines of... I spy with my little eye something beginning with D. Drama! Sorry, but I find this fucking unbelievable, genuinely unbelievable, that a community as large as YouTube as a whole, with its millions and millions of users, can look at this guy as genuinely unintelligent as he is, with his unbelievably questionable and strange, honestly childlike behaviour, and watch a video of his that's as rambly, confusing and completely pointless as the one he made, and still listen to it and take it seriously, and even blindly believe him purely because he has a lot of subscribers. I cannot fucking believe that. I'm telling you, and I'm not lying, right? The insane amount of things to criticize this video about, given that it's only 13 minutes, is fucking unbelievable. And I'm telling you, there's more. I have so much to say about him still. Listen, if you want, right, I talk about this kind of shit all the time on my Twitch. So if you want to go follow me on my Twitch, right, here it is. If you ever see me streaming, feel free to ask me whatever the fuck you want, including the extra stuff about Markiplier. But again, this is literally one of the absolute worst videos I've ever seen, if not the worst. And this is the video that caused all of this change. That is unfucking believable what a nice transition we have here to go from one of the worst videos I've ever seen to one of the most unnecessary. Let's talk about Matthew Santoro's drama video. Okay, first of all, right, for anyone who's actually seen it themselves, can we all agree that all Matthew Santoro did was jump on the PewDiePie Markiplier drama is bad bandwagon and make a six minute video where he added nothing new to the conversation whatsoever. Not a single fucking thing was said in that video that was of any use or any interest at all. Sorry, Matt, but that's the truth. It was the most pointless video on YouTube I've ever seen. All he did was pretty much just say exactly what Markiplier and PewDiePie had already said. I want to talk to you guys. I decided I needed to talk. And YouTube is changing. You I see a shift happening. Channels now focusing solely on YouTube drama. Channels dedicated to covering drama. And again, I'm not being apocalyptic. That being said, it's not all doom and gloom. And I don't know how to fix it. I really don't. I don't have the solution. I've never pretended to have the answers for anything. I recently saw some videos by PewDiePie and Markiplier. Did you really now? I would have never guessed, Matt. Now listen, some of you might be thinking, what the fuck, Greg? Why is this video coming out a week late? 
I even said this on Twitter, right? I literally made an entire video and had to scrap it. And if I'm honest, one of the reasons was I didn't think that I went as hard on Matthew Santoro as I should, given the information that I have. I've got facts and evidence for everything that I'm about to say. Listen, Matt, I'm sorry, right? But you added to this whole drama shit. Which means that you added to me getting the bullshit criticism for being a drama whore. And I do not appreciate that shit at all. The the Matt is currently complaining about this culture of drama on YouTube. And given that this drama has absolutely nothing to do with him, why is it getting to Matt so much? To be completely honest with you guys, I've been really bummed about the state of YouTube. And it's starting to make me... Sad. I've just felt down about making YouTube videos. Matt's like the golden boy of YouTube. Matt has no reason to worry about drama, does he? Why would Matt care so much about drama? Well, let me tell you. Matthew Santoro has some serious skeletons in his closet. Let me explain. You know, once in a while, there are moments that come along in life that just make you lose all faith in society as a whole. Now would be one of those moments. That's correct, Matt. Yes, it would. In this video, Matthew talks about drama being a problem on this website. But there's something else that happens on YouTube now and then, right? Which is such a big problem when it happens that it makes drama look like nothing. Fame, it's something that many of us would love to have. And it seems as if Matthew Santoro will stop at nothing to get it. Listen, before I say this, let me make sure I word myself very carefully, alright? <clears throat> because I believe it would be very reasonable to say that from the evidence that I've seen and that I'm about to show you in a second, YouTube's golden boy, Matthew Santoro, plagiarizes like a motherfucker. I have seen evidence that Matthew Santoro plagiarizes a ton of his material from a website called listfirst.com. And honestly, right, that fucking sickens me. Again, let me word myself very fucking carefully, okay? I am not saying that he's a plagiarist. All I'm gonna do is show you the evidence and you make your own conclusions, okay? All right, fantastic. This is not the only video and article that are suspiciously similar, right? But let me just show you the example of one particular video. On November the 5th, 2014, listverse.com published an article called 10 Weirdly Famous People. What it is, right, is it's an article talking about 10 people who are famous for really weird reasons, right? However, on November the 10th, 2014, literally five days later, Matthew Santoro made a video called 10 People Famous for Really Weird Things which is a video also talking about 10 people who are famous for really weird reasons. What a fucking coincidence. But listen, it gets worse, all right? The 10 people featured in the list verse article in order of appearance are these guys. And the 10 people in Matt's video in order of appearance are these guys. Literally the exact same guys, every single one. And not only that, right? but in the exact same order too. Do you know what the odds of that happening are? Literally, 1 in 3.6 million. That's comparable to lottery odds. Again, what a fucking coincidence. And again, it gets even worse. Not only did Matt have an almost identical topic five days apart and have the exact same names in the exact same order as the Listverse article, Matt pretty much just read out exactly what was in the articles. Character in 500 commercials spanning a career of 21 years. In fact, in a 1978 poll, Mr. Whipple was the third most recognizable man in America, right behind Richard Nixon and Billy Graham, which consisted of six votes, including those from himself and his parents. In 1931, a guy named Plenty Wingo was talking to some friends about publicity stunts when he came up with his own. He decided to walk backwards around the world. He made it 13,000 kilometers before being sent back over a border dispute with Istanbul. Jesus Christ! Again! What a fucking coincidence! Now listen, again, I'm not saying that he's a plagiarist, I don't want to get sued, right? You make your own conclusions. All I'll say is that I myself think I have a pretty good idea why Matt's video was so fucking similar to the Listverse article written just five days before his video. And as if that wasn't bad enough, right? All of this apparent plagiarism from someone who has the fucking nerve to say shit like this. YouTube was built off of people who are just creative. Are you fucking serious, Matt? Creating? You just read it out. What exactly do you think you're creating? The fucking audiobook to that article? Seriously, you've got some fucking nerve talking about being a creator when that's the kind of shit that you do. You essentially reading out that article does not mean you created dick. If your mom buys a book and reads you that book as a bedtime story, you don't go and credit her for writing the fucking book, do you? No! She just read it out. 
in my opinion, right, you don't deserve any fucking credit for that video, Matt. Dustin Kosky is the one who is credited for writing that article for Listverse. I do not see Dustin's name anywhere in your video credits, Matt. From what I see here, in my opinion, you stole his work, Matt. You absolute fucking scumbag. Writing shit and coming up with material for a video or an article can be so fucking hard. And I find it disgusting, genuinely fucking disgusting, when people just use other people's work without their permission. And then you go and complain about the integrity of creators? What the fuck do you create? Listen, Matt, if you want my advice, right? Why don't you stop wasting your time jumping on bandwagons from other popular YouTubers, complaining about drama, and start creating some actual material yourself? Fucking uncreative pieces of shit plagiarists make me fucking sick, man. You got some nerve complaining about drama, man. Plagiarism is something that I don't think anyone should tolerate, ever. And again, there's still a little bit more to say on Matthew Santoro, like juicy shit to say on Matthew Santoro, right? But this video's getting long enough. So again, right, shameless fucking plug. If you ever see me online on twitch.tv, ask me whatever the fuck you want. Dust it off, put it sideways, and stick it straight up. This is the second time that I've been up for over 30 hours making a fucking video this week, so I just want to wrap this video up as fast as possible, alright? This whole thing about drama on YouTube recently is being blown way out of proportion, seriously. And no one's speaking any fucking sense about it. And when these three clowns do speak up on the topic, everyone goes and listens to them, despite them talking nonsense. Listen, next week I'm going to upload a video on the topic of YouTube drama as a whole, and I'm going to try and bring some fucking sense to it. But listen, that's next week, right? What's the message for this video? That plagiarism is fucking disgusting and anyone who does it should not be taken seriously as a content creator by anyone. And they should be fucking ashamed of themselves. Fuck me. Okay, that's enough talking from me, man. I just want to be done now. I've had my face buried in Windows Movie Maker. I never want to see that shit again, man. But before I go, right, go follow me on Twitch.tv. Come see how amateur my streams are. Alright, have a good one, everyone. I'll see you next week when hopefully we can clear all of this drama shit up. In a world of good people and bastards, Ajmal is a bastard and he's the biggest bastard of them all. Bitch!